a little to a rainy day here in the Philippines. Well, it's a Sunday and uh, it's supposed to be our day off and we usually like to go out and enjoy on this day, but I didn't feel like going out to a mall or a restaurant. Um, wasn't up for that. Wasn't up for mall ratting it, you know, being a mall rat. I wasn't up for that. And it's raining and I just wanted to stay here at the Casa. So I'm working on my little Bonka boat out the beach and I am redesigning the outriggers on it. And I'm reskinning the boat and then I'm going to shoot um, resin on both sides of the plywood on the skins I put it on. And I'm going to put fiberglass cloth over the outside of the boat once I reskin it. So when I'm putting the resin on at the same time I'll go ahead and put a layer of glass on it as well. And hopefully that'll give the boat a nice longevity. Another thing I'm doing on the boat is I'm putting fixed, solid, compartmentalized bulkheads in that small boat. So if it was to take a strike in the very front, up on the bow, in the first several feet, and water was to leak in there, it can't go into the rest of the boat. If the section between there, in front of where I drive, along the gunnels there, if that was to get a leak or take a strike from something or anything, water can't go anywhere but stay right in there. And the same in the back, um, in the, near the engine and all back there, it's going to have a solid bulkhead. Something happened back there, the transom gets damaged, anything like that. Um, once again, the, the water can't flood the whole boat. And then what I want to do is put little screw-in plugs at the bottom of the bulkhead right down down in there in the belge, I'm gonna put a little screw in plugs, probably about an inch and a half cap that I can remove. And if water's in any one of those compartments and I wanna drain it to the back of the boat where there's a hole that goes down and drains out the bottom and there's a plug in there, well then I can open that all up and let it drain. And I want it big enough, if there's any debris, it doesn't just easily clog it. So that's the story with that. And I'm cutting out uh, pieces to make custom outriggers that are like little mini canoes themselves. So I've been out here jigsawing. You can see where I've been cutting all these pieces and uh, got all my scraps in there where from cutting and cutting. And I cut everything so far just out of scrap marine plywood that I held on to. Well, I like to hold on to scrap, man. If, if I was to, you know, I might have to go buy a whole sheet of plywood to make these small parts. Man, that's money wasted right there. So, you know, I stacked it over here to the side, and um, I knew that I would have a project for those. You can't go wrong with having some marine plywood around, especially if you're by the seashore or you got boats or anything like that. Even small pieces come in handy. So I've got one piece screwed on to uh, one of the new cross beams out there on the boat now where I'm making a custom cross beam for these little mini canoe outriggers. And so one of these is already screwed on. This is another one, it's my little template piece and I'm just kind of marking where I'm probably gonna be notching this thing out. Not 100% sure until I put it up there and dry fit it. But this one goes on the center and makes the other one. And two of these will go to the back beam two more of them here to the front beam, cross beam across there. And this is a midsection piece. I need to make three more of these that will go halfway between these two. So these two are tied onto beams, but this will be halfway in between. And uh, it's five eighths of an inch wider than the uh, front one. And then this one's five eighths of an inch wider than this mid one. And then at the back, I do the same thing. That way it gives me a nice curved shape. Um, we got some weather that's gonna hang in here maybe for a couple of days. I'll just have to see how it's gonna be. Um, might hinder me on some things I'm trying to do. But I need to make a run down to the sawmill. And I need to buy two more pieces of that uh, mahogany wood. And I need to get my other two beams across car from that there's a lot of wood you can use mahogany is not necessarily the best wood but this is a small boat plus these are fixed outriggers it should be very strong um, the design on it the further out you get the more they can torque too but there's also less chance of you flipping as well there's you know it's a give and take 
So, uh, but these are going to be a little bit more hard fixed. These are all going to be fiberglass thin. Um, there's some great woods out there you can use. Uh, Gemolina is a great wood. So, uh, I'm going to go down tomorrow and I'm going to go ahead and buy two more pieces of the mahogany and use on my cross beams. Not saying it's the best one to use by any means. If you were doing a big boat, you know, be careful what wood you use or you need to laminate layers or something. But this is small. This is a small boat. Small little canoe, banca. And um, I am going to buy some gemolina strips that are going to go down the sides of my little mini uh, little canoes for my pontoons um, on the sides of the boat. So I go down sawmill and get all that tomorrow. Hopefully, if it's not too nasty a weather out. I'm gonna try to talk out here in the wind. It is uh, very windy here right now. Look at that surf out there, man. Look at that. A lot of debris washed up on the beach. People are down here gathering it everywhere. So, out here on my boat project, I just come back from the sawmill, picking up two mahogany boards right here. And I took off the one template I've already made that was across right here. I've got it all lined up. I'm about to draw an outline on it and cut it. Then I got another one below. I'll work on the same thing on it and that'll give me my three pieces. Now one thing is it's not gonna be an identical cut because the front of the boat is narrower and the back of the boat is narrower than in the middle. So I can't cut this area right here yet. I'll have to skip it and just leave it blank not notch it uh, because those will be in further right here but that's why i have it where it has a nice flat plane in that area uninhibit it right there all right so i've got it marked out on here boy it's windy out here got it marked and about to start cutting it i'm gonna make some of the cuts this time with the circular saw where i can some of these radiuses i can still work that saw around on and then I'll plane it out afterwards. Um, I'll plane finish a lot of this. So I give an explanation of what I'm doing here if you see me with that saw reared up in the air. This mahogany is very hard. Very hard. Of course it's called a hardwood. And it's a full two inches thick. It's not an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters. And for me to cut it, cut it with anything, say like a sawzall or a jigsaw, is very difficult, hard work on it. And for me to cut it with a saw, well, I'm cutting a long curved radius here. So, what I'm doing on this uh, saw blade is just burying like the first three quarters or an inch of it down in there. And just that final part of the blade right out here, uh, it's not very wide across, but the further you get up, you're all the way up, you know, to about seven inches right there. 
So as long as it's down with that first part of the blade in there, I can turn it as I go. I can curve it. I can come back and make a second pass and maybe get it on down uh, a little over an inch or so down in there. And that's getting me far enough that I can come back with my Sawzall now, keyhole saw, and go right down that same spot. And it doesn't have to work so hard to cut through. And this track's a little wider than this blade, so it's not really gonna be pinching on the blade on the Sawzall. So that's gonna be my best bet to get um, this cut through and not wear my saws out. This is some tough stuff, but that's what I want. slowly getting it there it is some hard wood and it's starting to take shape though so I think I'm gonna try to make a couple more little cuts down with a circular saw into this backside it's a long arch so I think I can get the blade in there a little bit more 
even if I can get another half inch, it's gonna make it easier for that Sawzall to uh, cut on through the rest of that. So just keep on whittling at it here. And then I got one more to cut after this one. All right, I got this one cut out. And I'm about to fit it on the front or the back. I think I'll fit this one on the back of the boat. I got one that's a little thinner here that I plan on trying to make a little different cut. Uh, probably maybe gonna look at laying that cut out right now. But uh, this one will be my rear one. There's my metal one. And then I'm gonna cut one just a little different for the front up there. So I'll have a look at it. Well, I've got it rough fit in right now. So uh, about to do a little planing. So it's all cut just a little oversized. So when I plane it, I can plane it down the shape and size. So it's sticking up just a little additional here. I'm gonna start planing that down a little bit on the bottom too. And I planed on that one up there some already. That's why it looks thinner right through here. Cause it is because it's been planed down and uh, take a little bit better shape. So that's what I'm gonna get busy here doing right now is a little bit of planing work. Well, Miss Melinda helped me screw a couple pieces on just temporary for visual effect. We got this one on and we screwed that one on over there. And it's going to get to the point I won't be able to do anything else once I make this front when I cut it tomorrow. Won't be any, able to do any other work on this until I roll the boat over, take set these back off. They're just sitting there right now. Uh, put my bulkheads in that I'm going to build. So that'll be the next project is the bulkheads set these off outside put them back up there at the house put the bulkhead the bulkhead and the back bulkhead then roll the boat over get new plywood on the side before i put the plywood on put a coat of epoxy resin on it and it needs a layer of glass so once rolled over i need to strip all that paint Maybe get this roughest grit sandpaper I can get so it has a real fast stripping action. Remove all that paint off the bottom and then uh, put a layer of, of cloth over all the bottom and all the way up the side so it's just completely sealed. And then there's a lot more gonna happen that I'm just gonna let that unfold and you all see it as it, as it does. But You'll see where my pontoons are going to be built down this side. It's going to be really cool. 
really really cool and uh, there's a lot more to come I'm enjoying this um, it's, it's just a great project I think and I'm trying to get it done storm season as soon as it's over with I want to uh, find those pretty days and I really want to truly enjoy those days uninhibited and uh, by God if one of these boats ain't running maybe the other one is <laughs> and uh, enjoy these boats that's what it's all about for me i want to enjoy the water here and all so hope you're liking this project so far if you are comment down below and if you are subscribe to us and uh i'll have a playlist that's built just for the boats and um, what i'm doing to them here and i hope that you enjoy seeing all this happen maybe it'll inspire you to do something similar there's a lot of things that's going to happen in this boat, I think, that you're really going to enjoy once it all comes to fruition here. So stick with us, and uh, we'll see how we convert this Obanka even further. We, we built it for an outboard now. That was successful. We built it where it has steering wheel and forward controls. That was successful. And now we're going to spruce it up a little bit more and make it a true little coastal cruiser for running around here. And I hope you're enjoying that.